What's up guys, it's Tanner with Built Not Bought. It's a cold November afternoon and I'm about to start a huge white oak table. I hope you enjoy watching me struggle to get this thing milled and ready for glue up. This table is gonna be 10 feet long, 38 inches wide, and a mixture between solid white oak and steel. It's gonna be huge, heavy, but most importantly, it's gonna be beautiful. Thanks for watching. It's days like today that I wish I had a hired hand helping with all this stuff. It doesn't seem like much, but 10 feet of eight quarter white elk, it's heavy. Luckily I've got these carts here from Home Depot, picked them up a while ago. They make unloading and loading a little bit easier, adjustable height and on wheels. Alright, so the hardest part of this whole build, in my opinion, is going to be jointing all of this lumber. It's 10 feet. My jointer is a 76 inch in feet out feet table bed. And you get this rocking motion, just the weight of the boards and no support. So I'm adding these benches to the in feet and out feet of my jointer so that I can hopefully run these through and get a nice flat edge. So off camera I've been working on the legs, I cut these at 30 inches with the 12 degree bevel and I'm face jointing one side of each of these. I put an X on the inside so I know which side to joint and over here I have it labeled B and that one's also B and when I'm done face jointing these I'm going to sandwich those two together and glue it up so that I have a thicker leg. Alright, four hours later. I finally got everything milled and ready to be glued up. This isn't the end of the milling for the legs especially. I'm going to glue those up and then I'm going to have to square them up and everything after I'm done gluing them. But everything's ready to be glued. Check it out. It's kind of sad looking at it. It doesn't look like it was that much work, but those 10 footers are a pain. So all my legs and then I've got my stretchers and of course the tabletop over here. And I didn't get a recording of the actual glue up process itself, but I used every single clamp that I own to get this thing done. Thankfully, I had nice clean edges and was able to go together smoothly. What's up everybody? It's the next day. I'm back in the shop. I got the legs glued up uh, last night and now I need to square everything up. So I might have kind of glanced by this earlier, but when I'm milling lumber, the whole point of it is to get everything flat, parallel, and square, which might sound simple, but it's a little more technical. And if you don't have everything perfect, on larger tables especially, small discrepancies become big issues over time. Here's my legs. They're oversized, um, about 30 inches, and we'll end up trimming a couple inches off these when we're all said and done. But I like to leave them a little oversized and then slowly work your way down to your, your finish size. They've got a 12 degree bevel on both sides. And we're going to get rid of all that glue and get them nice and square on the jointer.
So these are going to sit on top of the legs and they're going to be orientated just like this where the top of the table will sit on here. And I put this 12 degree miter on here to kind of give it a little bit of a nicer look. And I'm going to add to this. I've never done this before, but I just feel like a table like this needs those little extra details. And I'm just going to take and square off. I'm going to come in like an eighth to a quarter of an inch and square off this end. So it's going to go at an angle here at 12 degrees and then get square here. So it'll be kind of like a two piece angle. Let me know in the comments if you think I should have just left it as a straight 40 or a 12 degree miter or what I'm about to do. All right, I just cut this on the miter saw. It's really subtle. Just kind of playing around with new ideas, but you got the main angle here and then it squares off here. And I think when it's all said and done, it'll look really nice with the tabletop sitting up here. Kind of a cool little detail. All right, so this is what everything looks like all together as one. I'm really happy with this. The next thing that I'm gonna do is draw straight lines on all of these joints. And then off camera, I'm gonna run my domino and punch all those holes so that they're ready to go. One thing you wanna make sure that you do is a little layout work, measure from the bottom up and make a mark so that you have the same gap up here or the same height from here as you do over here. I'm gonna go about four inches off the ground because this is a really heavy tabletop and the lower you put this support, this cross stretcher, the sturdier these tables become. Also, I've got a cool plan for the cross stretcher and I wanna be able to see that and the lower you put that, the more visible it's gonna be from around the table. And here's kind of a first look. Dominoes are in, just dry fitted. All my angles are looking good. Even without clamps, this is sitting pretty darn good. You can kind of get an idea of that edge detail a little better now in this lighting. I like it. All right, all this blue tape is for my glue up. Makes it a little easier to clean. These tight angled creases are so hard to get dried glue out of. And I almost forgot, so here you can see this little X here. I'm going to countersink and drill for the bolts that are going to go up into the actual tabletop. And if you do this after the glue up, you won't be able to get a drill in there to, to countersink that. So try and do it ahead of time. It'll just be way easier. Another tip or suggestion, always start with the larger bit that you're going to countersink with before the smaller bit. Because these Forstner bits... If there's a pre-drilled hole, they won't be able to grab, and this thing will just skate around and mar up your wood. And I'm just drilling deep enough so that the head of the bolt and washer sit below the surface, so that when you look at it from the side, you won't see that. Now that this is drilled, I'll grab my 3 8 bit to go all the way through, and that gives my quarter-inch bolt room to move around in there. I had to come in the garage because it's too cold outside for this glue to set up, but I used clamping blocks and CA glue on this one, so you just basically cut a block with a 12-degree angle, glue it on there so that you have even clamping pressure. You can clamp at 90 versus at an angle. And then on this one, I picked these up a while ago but never used them until today. They're like an angle attachment for these parallel clamps. I didn't have much faith in them, so only about one set, but they worked great for this. All right, so off camera, this is the bottom of the table. Routed out my channel for my C channel to sit in. Then I just got to mark out all these holes and then add threaded inserts in here, and this will just help 
hold that table flat. And I use this portable drill press from Rockler, not sponsored, but I use it almost exclusively to punch these holes out. Set your depth and you get perfectly straight holes every time. Take a 3 8 hole. I either use a countersink bit or the next size up, which is a half inch, and just very, very lightly remelt the top of that. That didn't seem like I did much, but it's just enough for the cap of that threaded insert to sit flush instead of proud. And then the last step is to tighten them down in there. And here you can see that lip I was talking about. It's kind of tapers off. And here we're sitting nice and flush because we countersinked around it. So here I'm working on two stretchers that are going to go across the top of each leg. I'm doing a little voice over here because you can't hear me talking over the drill moving but I'm countersinking and drilling through these the exact same way I did my legs to allow for wood movement and also to allow the head of the bolt and washer to be hidden when looking at it from the side. So basically the table will be fastened from these three holes and then I'm gonna half lap these stretchers from one leg to the next and then I'm going to glue and screw those down in there. Uh, that'll allow us to fasten into the center of the table. These will secure the ends, but those four bolts will secure to the center. And here's what I do to hide those bolts, just like before. Forstner bit first, twist bit second. All right, so I just did a quick and dirty half lap on my miter saw, clean it up as far as I could reach with my router, and this last inch and a half or so is gonna be all chisel work. Get this nice and smooth, then transfer this width over to my legs and cut out a little dado for those. So I ended up using my circular saw and a square to cut this out and it worked just fine. But if I could rewind and do it all over again, I would have done this before I assembled the legs at the same point in time I drilled out the holes to attach the tabletop to them. And it would have been much easier to set it up on my table saw sled and cut these out a little bit quicker and a little bit more accurately that way. But this method does work just fine. Using the outer two cuts as my guideline, I grabbed my router and plunge sled and I was able to hog out the inner portion of this half lap. So fast forward to the next day and the start of the sanding started. And at this point, I had been sanding for an hour and a half with 80 grit sandpaper and I got to about the halfway point on one side of the table. This white oak is extremely hard and it takes a lot of effort to sand but it's all worth it when you look at what's been sanded already and how beautiful it looks just naturally without any finish on it. While sanding, I filled every crack and knot along the way with some Starbond CA glue. You can use my promo code BUILT and save yourself 15% off if you'd like to purchase some. I use this all the time for this purpose. It allows you to quickly fill these cracks and voids, harden it within a couple seconds and continue sanding. There's no waiting for epoxy to dry and for that reason I use it all the time. Well, I got the table flipped, but ripped a hole in my pants. These are my favorite Levi's too. Dang it. I might have to start adding an extra 50 bucks to all my table quotes if I'm gonna be tearing holes in my Levi's like this. I can't stand for that. All right, so I've got the lumber all milled and ready for the legs to this bench. And 
come over to my miter saw. I'm cutting these at a 15 degree miter and I'm keeping my off cuts. And I'll use this piece later on when I glue together these A-frame legs. All right, here's a little pro tip for doing your dry fits, making sure everything works good. I take a razor blade and cut off the edge of the dominoes. So this one I've already trimmed off. If I pull one out of the bag, you can see like those lines on the side and those help keep it really snug when you're assembling it. But it's really hard to get them out when you're just dry fitting. So shave off those little edges and it makes things go a lot easier. And this one is ready for a dry fit here. We'll kind of see how everything looks. Out in the wood shop, building some table legs. And the shop dog, Sully boy, came to say hello. Good boy, Sully, good boy. So I lost some footage building the bases for these table, at least the metal side of it. So I'm gonna show you the process on the bench portion of this build. And I did everything exactly the same on the actual table with the exception of buying some turnbuckles online. I just fabricated some turnbuckles and welded them to a piece of square tubing and put them up at a 45 degree angle. But other than that, everything is identical to what I'm doing here with the bench portion of the build. So here's one of the plates that is a replica of what I have welded onto these uh, steel cross stretchers. And it's the exact same size, whole layout, etc. So I marked my midpoint here. And then if the camera will focus for me, you can kind of see that pencil mark up at the top. So this is perfectly centered on these awesome bench legs. So I'm going to mark my whole layout on each side of each leg, drill these holes on the drill press, and then these stretchers will just bolt all the way on and all the way through this metal plate. Now this metal plate is structural, but more than anything, it's kind of like a visual look. We're adding a little bit more steel uh, to this bench, which I think looks great. And the client wanted uh, a combination of white oak and steel. So we're trying to add little accents of steel as, as much as we can. All right, for this smoke show of a table, we're gonna be using Rubio Monocoat Smoke 5%. And Rubio is a three to one ratio. So I got these cups from Amazon. TCP quality automotive products. I'm pretty certain this is for mixing paint, like spray on paints for automobiles. And it has ratios on the cup and there's a three to one right here. So if you're a dummy like me and you can't do math, this makes it easy for you. <laughs> 